We're getting so close, I can smell it. I know I say that every single video, but we are getting closer, believe me. Uh, let's see if we can get this much going on. I want to send our geometry down to the renderer. Uh, numship verts is actually numship verts. And numship indices is num ship indices. I'm going to highlight this and tab it on in. And then we add the geometry. And I just want to see if we can get one renderable working instead of trying to get both the ship and the lurper going. Let's just see if we can get the ship going. And if we can, probably the lurper will follow soon thereafter. Now, before we actually add a geometry to the renderer, we should make sure everything is initialized quite nicely. So if not renderer dot hey initialize please then return false we're done we quit we can no longer go on and then we also need to do a shutdown to be clean so I'm going to open up the my game H I guess I already have it right here we should do bool shutdown simply for consistency uh, grab that control C go back to my game put it right here underneath the initialize uh, grab this, copy, paste. This is something I can't stand about C++ is maintaining these header files along with the compilation units, but I see why it is the way it is. Return renderer dot shutdown. Now we're going to soon add several more things besides the render, but for now we'll just say, hey, if the renderer can shut down, we can shut down. That's fine and dandy with me. We have the update here. Uh, inside of the update, remember this is just pseudocode, I was kind of slamming together, but I'm going to keep it there for later. Well, no, let's get rid of it. Why not? Let's say in our update function, we want the renderer to do its job. So renderer, uh, what is it called? Render scene. Right? I believe that's the right function. Control Alt L. Let's just go double check our or not this compilation unit. I want to look at the header information. It looks like not for renderable. For the renderer. And we have add geometry, add renderable, and then it's render scene. We're, I'm trying to keep the API, the interface for the renderer, as clean and lean and mean as possible. So we render the scene, shut down, add renderable, update. Yeah, good. So this update function. Whose job is it to call this update function? Control Alt L. Let's go. Let's go to main. Okay, I'm gonna go to the sandbox main. You remember we had our big kludgy mygl window and we initialized it. We showed it. We did all this stuff. Well, I don't want to use this anymore. This is the big kludgy version. We're trying to make a leaner, cleaner my game version. So what I'm going to do right here is pound include my game. And then I'm just going to get rid of the GL part. My GL window, my GL window, my GL window. And we'll even get rid of the include for it. We will say my GL, not my, my GL window, my game. <laughs> my game, my game, my game. Uh, actually, we need to initialize it. If not, my game dot initialize, then return negative one to the operating system. Obviously, if the game's not going to initialize correctly, then it's, there's no point in going on. And then in here, I want to say my game dot go. Right, I'm not going to say update because the update needs to be called 30 to 60 times a second, and main is not the location to, to do that. We could we could do it in a for like a while true and say update, 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 but then that would hang the thread. Go back and look at the video I did on the. Uh, GUIs are single threaded or something like that. And I talk about uh, we can't hang the thread. We have to let the GUI thread do its job, the widget thread do its job. And if I just do it a while true here, then I would essentially hog up, hog that up. So I can't say update. I just want to say, hey, my game, go. All right, and then uh, right here, my game uh, dot shut down. So we don't have a go function. Let's make a go function. My game dot h. Uh, update shouldn't be public. I'm not sure why I made that public. That's supposed to be private. It's just something my game's going to call 30 to 60 times a second. Void go. Control Alt L. My game dot CPP. Uh, void my game colon colon go. 
And what should Go do? Well, do you recall, I'm trying to get this update to run 30 to 60 times a second. And how did we do that with the GL window? How do we have the GL window do all of its updating? If I remember, we had several update functions, and it was quite the headache. But let me see. We had draw, and my update would call repaint. My update, where where do we actually reference this? I did a control shift F there. I highlighted it. Control shift F, that auto fills this in. Find all. It was signals and slots. Do you remember we made a timer? And we connected to it. Let me double click on this one. We said connect a timer. When the timer signals a timeout, then invoke my update. Well, I want to do the same with my game. It sets signals and slots. If you're familiar with .NET, it's it's just like events and delegates and event handlers, but instead in C++ we do this signals and slots thing that uh, Qt provides for us. Well, my game, we, we need to make this a slot. It's going to be a private slot, but nonetheless, I have to say slot. Slot is a macro that Qt uh, provides, does a lot of meta magic for us, but in order to get it to work correctly here, I have to say that my game is a Q object. Okay, and again, this is another macro that fills in a whole bunch of meta information that Qt provides. If you don't understand macros, go watch my C++ videos on macros, but essentially it's a copy-paste, fix-it-up deal. In order to get this macro to work correctly, though, and to have a slot, I have to mock my game. If you remember, we had to mock my GL window, which, if I go back here, Control-Alt-L, we created my GL window. We said it was a... Let me get the solutions explorer pinned. My GL window was a Q object, and it had a my update slot, and then we had to mock that, which basically mock reads the header file and looks at this and makes some meta information and generates this compilation unit for us, which basically handles all the slot stuff for us. If you want to learn about metadata in, in deep, you can go watch my .NET metadata videos. I have several of them on attributes and reflection and that sort of thing. I don't want to get into it too deep here, but the, the idea is here we add some metadata and then we can get the slots going. Well, we need to do the exact same thing with my game now. We need to mock it thus generate this other compilation unit and add it to our our program here. So let me let me bring up the command prompt. Bring up the Visual Studio command prompt to do this. CD backslash go to the D drive. Go into my engine slash project files slash sandbox game. Uh, clear the screen. List of the contents of the directory. We have sandbox game dot cpp my gl window dot cpp my game dot h so I actually have the correct version of mock sitting on my c colon backslash I have several versions of qt installed on my computer I don't have the latest and greatest one but that's not gonna kill anything c colon backslash mock dot exe you need to find this mock mock executable for your qt install mock exe my game dot h. I'm hitting tab there to do some auto-completion. If I just hit enter on that, no, no relevant classes found. No output gen. What do you mean? Oh, I didn't save it. And you see that star? It means I didn't save it. We need to save this. So I have the Q object in there. Hit the up arrow. Hit enter. Class contains Q object macro, but does not inherit from Q object. That's right. Public Q object. And we have to pound include i include qt slash q object, save the file, up arrow, hit enter, and mock generates all this C++ code. All right, this is the compilation unit. Well, it's not going to do us any good to have that display out to the command prompt. We have to actually dump it to a file. So the way we do that in, in DOS prompt scripting land is say, hey, redirect the output to my game underscore mock dot cpp and w underscore mock is simply my convention I believe I picked that up from other people on their mocks so so yes mock do your job but don't display it to the console instead redirect your output and save it to this file hit enter no output uh, but I can list that my game underscore mock dot cpp definitely exists now and I can even say hey display the contents of my game uh, game mock.cpp to the screen and hey it looks very much like what we had before. 
Okay, so now all we have to do with that compilation unit is add it to our project. I'm going to click here, click show all files. You see it's added here. The minus sign says, hey, it's not part of the project. Right click, include in project, turn off the show all files, and now my game mock is is part of our code base. Right now if I come over to the H file and I add more slots and that sort of thing, I have to remock this file. If, if I add or remove slots, then I have to remock the file. But other than that, uh, we should be good. Let me let's see what's this complaining about. Expected a oh yeah yeah. Remember we can't do this anymore. I was just I put that there for demonstration purposes. Control L, get rid of that line. Uh, still getting the squigglies. We'll f oh, nope, they're gone. Okay, my game. We need to tie a timer up to this. So my game, that, uh, the initialize would be a good place to do that. And I think what we'll do, we need a queue timer. I'm going to uh, put my GL window. I want to reference our old code. So my GL window, we have a queue timer. So my game needs a queue timer. So we'll put that in here. I'll put it up here at the top. Q timer. What do I call it? My timer? Mm, yeah, sure. My timer. Why not? We need the pound include for that, which looks like it's just QT, Q timer. And I like to include middleware stuff before my actual stuff that I write. Just to kind of let them get in first, and then I'll kind of follow in suit later. Uh, let's see. My timer. And then we need to connect the the timer with the slot, so my game dot cpp initialize the same as the oh my gl window. I'll let me put that in a new vertical tab group. Uh, connect. Here we can just grab this code. Copy, paste. Connect my timer when it fires the signal timeout. This is another macro. Then execute the slot on the current instance of the object. This object the slot my update. I can't tell you how much this looks like C sharp VB dot net delegates uh, delegate store uh, object and a function to execute or a function and then uh, object to execute that function upon. This is QT slick way of handling C plus hideous implementation of member pointer functions. If you have absolutely nothing left to learn in life Go and learn about C++ member function, pointer to member functions. What a hideous thing they are. So we initialize, and then when we say go here, all we need to do is start the timer. My timer dot start. Okay, and then my timer will execute update, 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 which for now will just render the spaceship to the screen. So there we go. <sighs> Getting closer. I'm sure we have some more build errors. Next video.